Aloha, children of the night, and welcome to the Tiki Golf Club. No, this isn't an episode of the Tiki Golf Club. It's this not. Is, this is actually going to be an episode of Straight Edge Tiki. Straight Edge Tiki? Yeah. Going to a tiki bar? With no booze. Well, that would be like going to Disneyland and just sitting in the parking lot all day. Yeah. Well, no. No, no, no. <laughs> So this is my buddy Doc. You've you've obviously seen him before. Uh, we've done a lot of Tiki Golf Club episodes so start together. Drooling. So we yes. Done, and um, <laughs> this one's going to be a little different, though. We're not going to really be talking about golf stuff today. Today we're going to be talking about. Well, I've as the as as this filming, I am four months sober. Congratulations! Thank you. Keep and, coming uh, back. Yeah, it works and, if you work it. And if you ever watched any of the any videos that we've done, you'll notice that we're always drinking A and W Reaper. We're still drinking beer, and, we're, and we'll still and we still are drinking it. Yeah. But there's a reason why, though, and the reason why is because my buddy Doc here has been sober for how many years now? Going on well, ten years. I'll, Go on. It'll be eleven this December, but that's six months away. So I've been sober for ten years, and that is. Nothing. No drugs. No medications. I take life on the chin every day. Yeah. As is. Yeah, and I've known I've known you for a long, long time, and Doc and I have actually been in a couple different <clears throat> bands together. Oh yeah, we've done. We've got some mileage on us now. We got some mileage on us, and <laughs> um, one thing I always think about when, like, in your situation, is like, here you are, you're playing in a punk rock band. You're in bars. How has that affected you? Does it bother, like when you became sober? I remember my first show. Um, I was a little concerned because I had only been sober two months. Yeah, and it was um, we were doing a show, and I was gonna, and it was a knock down, drag them out night. It was like a birthday party, and it was a wild and crazy night, and it was just all the things that would happen on a night where I was using and drinking. Yeah. But I was sober through the whole thing, which almost made it better. Like, watching that from a different viewpoint, being sober, yeah. not doing the decline that you do during the night. You know, not like, you know, having a couple of drinks and then it's just business as usual. No, this was a new experience now, seeing what happens around you when you're in that environment, but you still have your faculties about you. And I've grown to love that. Because it's interesting. It is interesting to watch when when you're in that it when you're in I'm rarely in a bar now where it's just wild and crazy. And if it is wild and crazy, I'm usually not there very long because I get annoyed yeah. real quick. It's just kinda like but being in that situation, I remember that night very well and it was really interesting to see what's happening around you for the first time when you're actually freaking firing on all pistons. And everyone around you isn't. That's the main thing that I'm, I'm I've been noticing. You know, the ne the episode topic is the question: um, Do I miss it? You know, do I miss the booze? Do I miss the alcohol? And I, at, at first blush, I would say like, oh no, not at all. But it's it's complicated though. Before you became sober, I mean, obviously, you and. Did, did you enjoy drinking? I mean, oh, God, obviously. it was great. I always thought it so, was... So how do you go from, like... I mean, the best stories I had, like, it was when I was younger. In the Navy, drinking, that was a blast. Because yeah. I'm in my early 20s, traveling around the world, stopping in port, 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 and drinking your socks off with your best friends. Yeah. There's nothing going to top that. That was great. When I got out of the Navy, it was drinking... And go into karaoke bars and doing a lot of speed. Yeah. And you know what? That was fun. And I think what made those, that particular period of the, there wasn't any real repercussions. When I first started playing in the rock and roll bands and started doing that, it was fun because you have all these great experiences. But, you know, fast forward a few years, married, own a house, have a kid. Drinking starts causing problems. The thing that I miss... Isn't the booze itself, 
But uh, yeah, I mean, I would look forward to like, all right, I'm going to go to the tiki bar and I'm going to get drunk or I'm going to get buzzed. I'm going right. to have a, you know, I'm like, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm going to do that. Or I knew I was going to do that. It was part of the fun of it. And what's been tough for me is just like, okay, yeah, you're going to go to the tiki bar. Yeah, you're going to drink some non-alcoholic drinks. They're good. They're good. They taste great. But now that like, hey, I'm not going to get drunk now is no longer part of the equation. And I'll tell you what, Doc, that's kind of weird. It's kind of a we yeah, hard, to, hard yeah. situation. Did you yeah. experience that? Where you're like, all right, I'm going to go to the show. And part of it was like, yeah, I am going to get it. I'm, I'm going to put a couple of drinks in me. And now it's sort of like, well, now not, I'm going to go to the show, but now I'm not. Now that's not part of the equation. I think by that time I was already exhausted with what would happen when I got fucked up at a show. Okay. I think by that time, because when I, I got sober for a reason, I yeah. mean, it was it was a problem. A lot of people can drink their whole lives, and it's not a problem. They they know how to do it. They know their limit. They don't yeah. get DUIs. Their marriages don't fail. They're they're great at it. Me, what I learned in rehab was you kind of handle it like you have an allergic reaction to alcohol. Yeah. And I guess my allergic reaction is I just get real stupid ideas when I start drinking. <laughs> like the drinking, I was never yeah. dependent on alcohol. I honestly never liked it. Beer, you can have it. But I would drink it. You know, I'd be with my friends. You'd have a beer. Jack and Coke. I, I love Jack, Jack and Coke. Coke. I do. I still do. No, I was. I, I was Jack and Coke. I, I was. I am an. I am a Jack Daniel, Jack and Coke apologist. And I'll tell you what. I mean, like that was my go-to drink if I was going out to like a regular bar. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good drink. It was my regular drink. I had that freaking fucked up fat Stevie Ray Vaughan face from my kidneys working overtimes. It was great. I loved Jack and Coke, and that was like the drink that. It kind of bums me out that like I cannot have that drink anymore. Yeah, actually, because that's what I would do. I'd do double Jack and Cokes. You know. Yeah, it was just, yeah. It was, More for your money. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. But, but you know, it, like I said, the drinking was never a dependency. I would just do it because that's what would happen. You'd get with a friend, you'd finish work I'd, or finish whatever you're doing. I, I was doing sound a lot. Yeah. And after a gig, you go, let's go get a drink before the bar closes. Or you just, it'd just be a night you have off and like, hey, let's go have a drink. It always started off. Those were the best nights. Let's, let's go grab a drink. Let's go grab a drink. Yeah. It was never the nights yes. where you were planning on going to the festival and getting fucked up all no, weekend. No, Nothing no. fun happened that weekend. The <laughs> nights where I was just with a friend on my way home and just said, you know what? Why don't we go get a drink? There, no. And then fast forward five hours later and I'm in a freaking drug den and it may as well be fear and loathing in Las Vegas. One thing I've noticed though, and just like what you said, is that now I'll go and now I'm drinking non-alcoholic stuff. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing is, is I'm used to feeling myself change. You're like, oh, okay, now I'm starting to feel a little buzzed. Yeah. Okay, now I'm starting to feel a lot buzzed. And then, but now I'm noticing everyone else getting more and more inebriated. <laughs> doing the or, decline. Or I'm still like, okay, I can still do algebra in my head, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's fun. Like I said, <laughs> for the first it's weird. year. It's, it's kind of a weird thing. For the thing. first year or maybe for a while, you'll, you'll, you'll still go out and you'll still do that. And you're, you're going to interest it. After a while, it kind of becomes old hat. And, you know, I still go out. I try to go support my friends' bands. Yeah. Uh, we do a show on occasion yeah. still. And, you know, I never have a problem with, oh, I should have a drink. I mean, I've definitely had lots of nights where I went out where a lot of alcohol would make this night a lot better. When you got sober, right? I mean, obviously, did you have people, like, kind of, like, ask you? Like, oh, why don't you? Oh, yeah, I don't drink anymore. And people would be like, well, why not? They look like... <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> well, a lot of people... And to this day, when you tell them, "No, I'm sober now," they <laughs> sometimes oh. a lot. You get a lot. You get a they're lot like, of they're like, you're like your they dog died. You like, oh, like, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> that's what you get. They talk. They start talking to you like you got a terminal illness. Yeah. That, well, that's the thing. They're, they're like, there's like a lot really? of there's like a lot of people that are like that. I've been saying is like, yeah, how are you doing, Ray? Okay, well, yeah, I'm, 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 I haven't drank in like four months, and they're like, good for you. Or they start apologizing. Good, good for you. I'm so, I'm very proud of you. Like like I'm a cancer survivor or something like that. <laughs> That's what it's well, nothing like. against cancer survivors, you know, but it's just sort of like you know, it's like I made the decision to stop drinking. You know, it's just like this is what you get a lot, you know, or you get the guy who they, they can't just say hi. Yeah, they just go. <laughs> how you doing? 
<laughs> like, I know it's been rough. I know it's been rough. But we just want to know we're all there for you. And, like, fast forward nine years later, you're kind of like, no, I'm good, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, thank you for your support. Um, no, you get a lot of different... Most of all, people are just supportive, and they're very cool. <clears throat> You know, you always get the people that are drink. Is this going to fuck up your shit, you know? I'm, oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to be drinking our socks over here and doing lots oh, of... Oh, I've, I've been getting that, Hope too. you don't mind. I've definitely <laughs> had that where, like, you know, I'd be with someone, they're like, is it all right if I drink? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. drink for me. You well, know? what you'll get is you'll get a lot of people that start apologizing because they drink casually. Yeah. They're like, I only have a few drinks once in a while. I, I don't do this all the time. I never do this. No, I, I'm getting that. And they're looking at I, you dead in the eye. I'm eyes. getting, I'm getting that from friends that I know personally. I'm like, no, but they're so no, but, you, no, no, no I'm not getting that. But what they're doing is they're doing that. A lot of people are like, yeah, I'm trying to cut down myself too. <laughs> yeah, you get as you see them like get drunk. buckle up because you're gonna. It's gonna get even funnier because you you get the people that start apologizing. The, they're making themselves a drink and they're drinking and they're noticing you're not drinking. They're like, I'm really. Just, I, 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 I just, need I to, never do this. I just need to break. I just need to. I just need to take the edge off. <laughs> yeah. One thing that's been tough for me, Doc, is that the fact of like, okay, well, it isn't just like I'm some random, random guy that stopped drinking. It's sort of like, okay, well, I have this whole tiki with Ray thing, and I don't want to say that I have, I have persona. I like that. I take pride in the fact that like I am me. You know, the person that you see on camera is the same person that you would meet in person. One thing that has been tough for me, though, is like to be like, okay, yeah, the, the alcohol wasn't all of my thing. Right. But it was definitely a part of it. Yeah. And it's tough to be like, okay, now that's not... How do you, how do you deal with like having something that is part of, of your life and now it's not? Well, what I learned was... Because I, I thought that <clears throat> was going to happen as well. I thought yeah. I would never be able to perform again. And now I already discussed... The creative energy and the drive to yeah. create music that is long gone and i desperately want it back i don't know I, I pick up my guitar once in a while and i have fleeting moments of inspiration but that is one casualty of all this yeah. and i do kind of blame it like i'm just not in that frame of mind anymore however um being a part of it i've learned that i still do shows i still can perform and I perform, I think, way better than I ever did when I was on drugs. I think that I didn't lose anything there. When I get on stage, I change. Yeah. There's something that happens, and I don't care. It That has not gone away. And I don't think that'll ever go away. But definitely that drive. And I think maybe that might have been tied to the alcohol and the drink. Um, I do know the best songs I wrote were when I was completely in that realm of addiction and there's something about being broken when you are completely broken there's something that comes out of you that's beautiful when you can write like good songs that can, that's i'll tell you what man i mean that, but I, i'm not there now like no but I, I but you know what i'll be honest with you doc like kind of like part of what i've been feeling over the last couple months is kind of like for lack of a better word kind of broken broken i kind of feel like and you'll probably feel that way for a while. Because I remember... Is that normal? Yeah, it's totally normal. Because I feel like... It's completely normal. It happened to me. It, it was. It lasted for about six months. And it was just kind of like I basically had to come to Jesus with myself about yeah. everything. Like I said, when you're sober, there's no fairy dust anymore. You kind of see things and feel Just things. reality. Just You feel things for what they are. And a lot yeah. of people, they can't handle that they need to take that edge off they're like the thing that the thing that's been really really hard for me is that up until i stopped drinking or until i started having like the problems because i've, I've heard this statement uh, so i've heard it from somewhere it's like when it comes to drinking first it's fun times then it's fun times with problems then it's just problems i couldn't have said it best that's and, perfect and like and then i got into like the fun time with problems and um the whole time, I would I would never have thought like I had any kind of issues with alcohol. You know, I didn't think I had a problem with it. I didn't think I was like addicted to it. Yeah. And to me, I like, mean, like I like I still feel like I'm not addicted to it. But obviously, there's problems. There's obviously some problems, and I feel like I'll tell you what. The whole experience is like. I mean, I'm so glad that I stopped. 
Yeah. I honestly think it's like one of the best decisions I've, I've made in my in recent times. I think I might have saved my life from a, like an from like early heart attack or uh, or diabetes or whatever the hell it is. But in the, it's like okay, yeah, I'm doing like the right thing, but I still feel like like I messed up somehow. Like you lost something. Yeah. Yeah, that's normal. It is? And you did lose something. That that was a whole part of your life. What do you mean by that? Doc? Like when you quit this, there is a whole you got to understand you've been living a certain lifestyle. Yeah. Your whole life. Yeah. And now you're not. And to continue this, you can never go back to that. You can't just like it's like me it's like me dieting. I'm always trying to diet. I'm always trying to work out yeah. and take care of myself. And stay away from the things that I like, like chocolate and candy. You yeah. know, I could go months, won't have a piece of chocolate. Yeah. As soon as I do, I'm right wrapped right back into the cycle of eating candy all the time. And I mean, I just eat. I can't stop it. That's my addictive personality. Yeah. That's the same thing with this. You can't go back or it'll, a lot of people think, oh, I can have a drink and it'll be fine. No, they will tailspin right back to where they were almost immediately. It's weird. You yeah. could go years. Like, I haven't done drugs in 10 years. If I decided to pop a Vicodin just to relax, it would probably be a week, and I'd be right back to where I was. Okay, well, if you drink too much, you can have it. You get a hangover the next morning. Yeah, okay, all right. But, like, I got to the point where, like, I, I would be drinking, like, that night, and I'm feeling like shit there. I noticed that my heart would be racing. Yeah. Like, anytime I would drink, I can feel my heart race. Or I'd have the thing where, like, I can go home, go to sleep, but then I'd wake up in the middle of the night and then I couldn't get back to sleep. And, you know, and, and, and the thing that really bummed me out is, like, even just when I start realizing of all the things that it was doing to me, I still continued to drink. And I think the thing that's been hitting me hard, Doc, is that, like, you know, a, like a normal person would be like, oh, this is doing this, 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 and this to me. I should stop. But I didn't stop until no. it was like, oh, I'm not sleeping at all now. Yeah. Okay, that's serious, you know. Yeah. Usually it takes extreme measures before you start realizing the problem. You're not gonna you're not gonna notice them early on. Yeah. But no, the biggest thing, the biggest change is it is a big part of your life. You you're talking about tiki bars. Yeah. You go to tiki bars. You drink the, you know, the tiki drinks and you've had a whole life and a whole cool, you know, experience with this whole situation. And now you're going to do it sober. A lot of people, hey, <laughs> a lot of people, you know, it's going to be like, how the hell do you do that? Well, that's what this series is. And the thing is, it's like when you're drinking and you have the best stories when you're drinking. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, I will never have any stories that are half as funny or amazing being sober as i do it when i was drinking yeah. they were great i mean a lot of them caused my life to go down the shitter but they're still fun to tell <laughs> but you know now it's just like oh yeah i went to a show and i was pretty bored all night because i was tired because i'd been up since 3 30 in the morning but i managed to stay awake and i wanted to support my friend's band so i went to the bar at nine and i just kind of stood there with my thumbs in my pockets dancing like a white person while i drank cranberry juice uh i noticed uh i there wasn't anybody to really talk to the music was loud and i left probably two hours earlier than i probably should have just because i just I, I felt like i felt like what i was doing at that point was a homework assignment and not going out to enjoy live music and that's what sobriety is to me now how does one go forward with with sobriety you find different you're gonna and have a positive thing on life as opposed to being like what's gonna happen is you'll probably still enjoy going to shows i was a sound engineer yeah so i think i've seen all the live shows yeah. that i'm going to see that are going to blow my mind um what will happen is you might develop new hobbies that you never knew that you would ever do me yeah i never in a million years thought i'd be a hiker planning on climbing mount rainier yeah ever never and that's what i do now you know, I, I'm out in the mountains. I never once thought I'd care about photography yeah. the way I do now. And now I just see the world through a different set of eyes. And I love, I love taking pictures 
of beautiful things. I'll say this. I mean, like, I still love tiki. I still go, I still love tiki bars because the main thing that I love about it is the environments, you know, being in that environment. Yep. And, um, you know, to answer my own question, it's like, you know, being honest, I don't miss the, it's weird, man. I don't miss the alcohol itself, but I definitely miss like all the other aspects to it. Yeah. And that's the thing. I don't miss. The I think alcohol. it's going to change. I think, I, mean, I think it's going, I mean, eventually my feelings about it. I felt sad. I, I don't, I, um, at the beginning for like the first month and month and a half, I had feelings of sadness. A lot of different things. Yeah, absolutely. And they went through that too. But what it is, is that you're not missing the alcohol. You're just missing that chapter in your life. Because it is going to be different now. It is different. I keep on thinking about the situation that stopped, that made me stop drinking, which was the insomnia. And I remember you getting those phone calls from you, and you were you were in a rough spot. And I came up here, you know, and, and um, yeah. And um, that was not, it was not a good time. And um I don't want to go through that again, and I'm not. No. I'm not going to go through that again. And it's like, as I said, like the the this situation is simple: sleeping or drinking. So I'm not going to start drinking again. No. But in some ways, I'm kind of glad that like I had to have something like that to say, like, okay, you're done, because I I played that game before, like for all of like last year, like oh well, I'm trying, I'm just cutting down on the drinking. No. I'm just going to cut down on the drinking. <laughs> no, when you're but at my that cutting stage. down on drinking is like way more than like the normal person would drink anyway. Yeah. And um, no, I'm not. I'm not. Believe me, you know, mark my words. I'm, I'm. I have zero plans to ever drink again. But I'm realizing, even just talking to you with this this episode, that it's my journey. <laughs> It sounds like it's just beginning. That's another thing I've realized. I've been going to bars and clubs for almost 30 years, and I haven't heard a fucking thing in one of those places. Not one. It's all body language. Yeah. When I'm communicating with somebody, that might... That might be the reason why I am having all these problems because I realize I, I can't hear anything anybody's saying. It's yeah, all just yeah. Like, oh, hey, ah, like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really? Oh, great. Cool. And I do this all night and I'm like, and I'm, I'm just doing, it's just this weird thing where you don't really know what somebody's talking about, but you know they're happy about yeah. it. And then when you go outside, you think, oh, well, now I'll actually get to talk to them. And then there's ringing in your ear. So oh, then you're God. just hearing. Or you're like, or you're like, oh, this person wasn't as interesting as and I thought it, they were. You're just like, you know, it, it would have been just better if I stayed home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Want to support the Tiki with Ray show and look cool doing it at the same time? Then head over to TikiWithRay.com and buy yourself a Tiki with Ray shirt. They're only $20. Tony Canepa did the design and the screen print in America.